The biggest reason why most disability tax credit applications are declined is because your application doesn't include enough details. This is assuming that you qualify and your medical professional is willing to complete the application. Hi everybody, my name is Jessie Vu and I've been helping middle income Canadians make better financial decisions for over 20 years. And I've had a lot of success working with clients over the last decade in regards to getting an approval. And I can confidently say that qualifying for a government benefit does not mean you're going to receive it. The biggest barrier seems to be the paperwork, not the diagnosis. Here are three mistakes that many people make. Mistake number one is a lot of medical professionals confuse disability income with disability tax credits. When it comes to disability income like insurance or CPP disability, qualifications are actually based on your ability to work. Disability tax credits, on the other hand, do not take any consideration for your ability to work. In fact, you could receive disability insurance and not qualify for disability tax credits. Confused? Many people are. Mistake number two, a diagnosis is not qualification. There isn't formal training or standardized training for professionals when it comes to completing this paperwork. As such, I find that a lot of applications get declined because the doctor will write a diagnosis and assume that the government employee who picks up this application will find it obvious that the patient qualifies, and this is just not the case. Mistake number three is not accurately linking how the diagnosis affects the qualification guidelines. There's a difference between marked restriction and significant limitation, and another confusing term is related to life-sustaining therapy. How does one meet the criteria for life-sustaining therapy? You'd be surprised. Let me give you an example of a client who was introduced to me after having been on long-term disability for over 10 years due to mental health that included depression, anxiety, and post-traumatic stress disorder.